to share a video without waiting on the mail. What do you think? Anyway, as I said on the phone, I think this may be the easiest way to get you up to speed on what I'm dealing with here. And before you ask, no, we don't have releases for the family. They refused to have their likeness involved in any way. However, they did allow me the use of Jessica's drawings. We will need to change their names when we get to the writing stage. Regardless, I think you'll be able to see why I think this will make one hell of a book. So, prior to our first session, each member of the family was given the standard questionnaire. The results are as followed. The patient's name is Jessica Daniels. Jessica, or Jess as she prefers to be called, is 7 years old. Normal birth, no complications, no no medical issues. She's intelligent, sweet, friendly, and highly empathetic. The child was born in Houston, Texas, where she never had issues in school or socializing with peers or adults. The family bought the Clark's house, beautiful house. I love how it's built up on columns. And I'm sure you remember the Clarks from your time here. Sweet old couple. They own that little dive you used to drag me to for lunch. What was it? Oh yeah, the Burger Shack. <clears throat> but anyway, according to her mother, Carol, just had a particularly tough time adjusting. She didn't notice anything out of the ordinary until the second week, Wednesday night to be exact. They think it was after midnight when Jess ran into her mother's room screaming. She claimed there were people living under the house. Carol dismissed this as a nightmare, but it started happening night after night until Jess finally refused to sleep in her room. She moved the child's bed to her room, but Jess continued to wake up saying the same thing. She could hear people talking under the floor. Carol made sure to note that Jess never had problems sleeping in Houston. Adam, the child's father, fed up with having the child sleeping in the room, devised a simple solution. He brought her under the house, tried to show her that there wasn't anything there. And according to Adam, there wasn't, but Jess was convinced she saw something. The girl got into a ball and screamed until her voice gave out. She's been mute since that day. After a series of tests and multiple second opinions, no physician could find anything wrong. There's nothing hindering the girl from speaking. The drawings you are seeing are currently her only form of communication. From observations and the questionnaire, I have a few thoughts on the other family members. Carol Daniels. She's the children's primary caregiver. From what I can observe, she's a caring mother. However, she is deeply resentful of her husband, Adam, for forcing them to move from Houston to Kate's Crossing. Adam Daniels is an obvious workaholic. He spends the majority of his time at work. Dean, her brother, typical early teen. He wasn't happy about the move, but seems to be adjusting adequately. Give me a call after you digest this material. Love to talk strategy. 